Hi guys, tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about um, some simplifications we can make to circuits. If we're working with a network and we want to simplify it, we don't really care about the details of what goes on inside. We care about the effect that circuit has on something else. We can throw out a lot of the details and simplify it to what's called either a Norton or a Thevenin equivalent circuit. So, uh, so let's see how that works. Okay. So suppose I have some complicated network with resistors, you know, I don't know how they're connected together, some complicated thing. And then maybe it's also got some current sources, various kinds, let's say I1. And uh, maybe it's got a voltage source over here, V1, and then more resistors, and then more, uh, I don't know. I'm just making stuff up here, of course. This is I2. We have another resistor, we have another voltage source here, this is V2, and so on. And it's just, it's complicated. But I just wrap all that into um, a blob. The point is, uh, this has lots of pieces. I'm going to just, I'm going to indicate, you know, it's got, it's got lots of pieces. But sooner or later, somehow, to the outside world, there appear two terminals. So we're going to look at the circuit from the perspective of these two external terminals. And what I'd like to do is to imagine that we have an external current source that we do care about. Let's call it I external. And then what we're going to do is dial. This is a variable current source, so we can dial it to whatever we like. And then we're going to measure with a voltmeter. Here we have a voltmeter. And we're going to measure the voltage across those external terminals. Does that make sense? Um, and then we're going to ask, how does the circuit behave uh, under the stimulus of this external current source? What are the what voltage appears as a result of this external current source? So that's the idea. Okay, so let me scoot this up a little bit, and then let's talk about let's get the math organized. So. You guys remember the superposition concept. The it's a theorem, essentially. It says that if you solve for a single current or a single voltage in a circuit, that the voltage is going to be a superposition of all the current sources and voltage sources in the circuit with coefficients that depend on the details of the circuit's you know, interconnectedness. But that in the end, so if I'm going to calculate this voltage that we're going to measure, this external voltage. Okay? The external voltage is going to be a combination of multiple things, but among them, um, we're going to have some unitless coefficient, A1 times V1, plus some other unitless coefficient, A2 times V2, get rid of that guy, plus dot, dot, dot. All the other voltage sources are going to get unitless coefficients, An times Vn, and then all the current sources are going to come. So we're going to have some uh, coefficient with units of resistance. Let's call it B1 times I1 plus B2 times I2 plus dot, 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 all those guys. And finally, of course, we mustn't neglect the effect that our external current source is going to have on the voltage that we're calculating. We're calculating the voltage at this external port. But that depends also on the external current. So there's going to be a B external and uh, I external. Okay, so the superposition theorem tells us this has to be the case. <clears throat> now, the thing is, uh, we know that it's a linear system, so it has to be, uh, all, this, all these dependencies have to be linear. So as I dial, as I dial the external current up and down, there has to be some value of the external current that makes the external voltage zero, okay? So at some point, so if I were to make a graph, say, here's the external uh, voltage, here's the external current, right? There's got to be some value of external current going up and down <clears throat> that makes the external voltage zero. So there's got to be some point here, say, where the external voltage is such that the external voltage, the external current is at the correct value to make the external voltage zero. Also, if I dial the external voltage down to zero, 
um, there's going to be some current associated with that. So it's going to, you know, there'll be some value. Uh, I didn't say that right. If I dial the external voltage up and down, there's some value of external voltage that's going to make the current zero. That's what I meant to say. So there's some external current that makes the voltage zero. There's some external voltage that makes the current zero. And because it's a linear system, I know that the relationship has to be linear. So there's got to be a line here that connects those two guys. That line, by the way, is called the load line. And we're going to be using that a lot um, in order to calculate. Okay, so let's think a little bit about what this means. Let's think about what happens when the external current is zero. So that means that the external voltage is not zero, but there's no external current. So this term is going to be zero. And that means that external voltage is going to be equal to all this other stuff here. Okay. And we're just going to give that a name. We're going to call that the Thevenin voltage. That's the voltage of all the stuff inside the box. It's the, I should say, it's the contribution to the external voltage produced by all the sources in inside the circle when the external current happens to be zero. So when the external current is zero, these guys create a voltage that uh, you can measure on the external port. Now, the point is this, if the external current is zero, it means that, um, and, and these voltage sources and current sources are all DC constant sources. This never changes, this is a constant. So the feminine voltage is just a number in volts, okay? So it means I can replace all that stuff. I can just say this is the feminine voltage, right? And then plus it's whatever this coefficient B external is times the external current is equal to the external voltage, right? But notice this is, uh, let's imagine, instead of having all this junk, we simplify and just imagine we have DC source or a battery, call that B Thevenin, and then we just have a single resistor, let's call it R Thevenin, and then we have our external port. You'll notice that this circuit would explain this curve, and it would also explain this equation, as long as B external is simply minus R Thevenin. So I'm going to just replace it here with minus R Thevenin, and you can see that uh, all the values on this curve now make sense. If, if I set the current to zero here, that means if I open this circuit, there's no voltage drop across the internal resistance, this Thevenin resistor, and the external voltage is just equal to V Thevenin. On the other hand, if I tie these two guys together, if I short this out, um, what current do I get? I get V Thevenin divided by R Thevenin. So R Thevenin is simply the necessary resistance to generate the correct short circuit current. Now you can show, I'm not going to show it right now, but you can show that you can calculate R Thevenin. You can either just short the terminals and then calculate the current and set that short circuit current is equal to uh, V Thevenin over R Thevenin, and then solve for R Thevenin. Or you can simply set all the internal voltage sources to zero, um, and set all the internal currents to zero, and then you can see that uh, the resistance looking into the system at that point, if I set the if I set all the current and voltage sources to zero, V Thevenin goes to zero. And so it just is equal to the, the or Thevenin resistance is just the resistance of the network with all the sources set to zero, setting these terms all to zero. Um, another thing I want to point out before we leave this topic, go ahead and do it down here, uh, it turns out there's an equivalent way to represent this network. You can do it with the Thevenin, like I can have a Thevenin voltage and a Thevenin resistance. That works, but there's an equivalent way I can have an internal single current source and a parallel resistor. Let's say, call that R Norton, maybe. Um, 
you'll notice that if I short the terminals of this circuit, there's no, well, <laughs> there's no current through the internal resistance. It all goes through the external circuit. So the short circuit current, you could also call this the Norton current, IN. IN. Um, it's simply equal to V7 and over R7. So I can uh, write that here equals V7 over R7. And then the Norton resistance, if I turn this down to zero and look at the resistance looking into this network, or another way to think about this is uh, if I open the, if I open the terminals of the Norton equivalent circuit, what's the voltage going to be? In this case, it's going to just be V7. And in this case, it's going to be I Norton times R Norton. But R, but if I want that to be V7, then R Norton and R7 have to be the same. So there's really no such thing as R Norton. It's really just R7. The two resistances in these two versions are identical. The only difference is, in one case, I have a the thevenin voltage, which is the open circuit voltage of this uh, circuit, I Norton is simply the short circuit current of the thevenin circuit, right? It's just a short circuit current, which happens to be V thevenin over R thevenin. All right, that's all I have for you today. Um, we'll do some exercises on this in class so you get an idea how that works. I can also, I'll work out an example um, to show you how this, this is done. Okay. So let's work out an example here. Um, I want to draw a simple circuit. Let's say we have a uh, current source here and uh, maybe a resistor. And just give it an, I'm just going to make up some crazy circuit. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be particularly practical. I'm just putting some resistors and sources in here. And then we're going to try to figure out what is the <clears throat> thevenin equivalent resistance and the thevenin equivalent voltage for that guy. Um, and just to make it simple, let's put in some simple values here. Make this 2 amps. Make this guy maybe 10 ohms. Make this guy 20 ohms. Make this guy 20 ohms. And then uh, I'll just put in 10 volts here just to make round numbers, okay? So the first question is, what's the Thevenin equivalent voltage? To do that, I, I simply want to solve for the voltage at the terminals of the network with, no, with nothing connected out here. So we open the terminals and just ask, what's the potential difference between those two points? So I'm just going to solve the circuit, ignoring what's on the right. So And just solving for the voltage at those terminals. Um, I want you to notice that uh, the current in this branch we already know, and uh, the current in this branch only depends on the voltage here. The current in this branch only depends on the current in this branch. So if I can figure out the current in this branch, it's the same as the current in that branch. So uh, your book probably talks about the idea of a super node. The point is, since I know the voltage, if I know the voltage here, let's call the voltage here E, the voltage here is E plus 10, right? Because it's got a 10 volt. So there's really only one unknown voltage there at that, at that point. Um, I don't know the voltage here, so I can't calculate the current based on that. I can't use the usual approach, which is this voltage minus that voltage divided by the resistance. But there's a current source in this branch, so I already know the current in that branch, so I can just write it down. So writing Kirchhoff's current law for this guy, using the nodal analysis approach, I can simply say that the current leaving this node is going to be minus 2, it'll be minus 2 from the first branch, and then it's going to be E divided by 20 for that second guy. And then for the third guy, uh, it's really just the current down this guy, so it's going to be E plus 10 divided by 20. And the sum of those three currents has to be 0. And then if I can solve that, I'll, I'll have the circuit solved. So it's really just one equation. Um, if I want to go back and get the voltage here, I could simply subtract, uh, well, I know it's 10 ohms times 2 amps, so it's got to be 20 volts. So this must be E minus 20. 
the fact that there's a current source in this branch sort of turns this resistor into a voltage source is what it boils down to. But anyway, let's go ahead and solve this darn thing. Um, so uh, I'll go ahead and factor this guy out. This will be E divided by 20 plus 10 divided by 20. That's E divided by 20 plus a half. So I'm going to get E divided by 20, and then another E divided by 20. So that's E divided by 10, and that's going to equal plus 2, and then I'm going to get minus a half. Bring that guy over. So that's going to be 1.5. So that means uh, simply E has got to be 15 volts. Okay, so that's that voltage. Of course, this point is E plus 10, so that means the voltage drop across these external terminals my Thevenin equivalent resistance, I can now state that that's 25 volts, okay? To get the Thevenin equivalent resistance, what I want to do is turn all the sources off and just look at what does the resistance of the network appear to be um, from the point of view of someone out here with all the sources turned off. You remember how that worked in the derivation. So this 10 volts, I'm going to dial that down to zero. This two amps, I'm going to dial that to zero. That means there's no current in this branch. That means there's no voltage drop across this 10 ohms. Um, it means that uh, basically this looks like two 20 ohm resistors in parallel, okay, is what it boils down to. This two amps becomes an open circuit, in other words. And what I end up with is a Thevenin resistance, uh, R Thevenin. which is just going to be 10 ohms. That's it. Now, uh, what that means is if I short these terminals, I should get a current V7 and over R7. So the short circuit current is going to be 25 volts divided by 10 ohms. That's going to be 2.5 amps. That's what I should get. Uh, let's check that. If I were to short this, that would mean this point would be ground. This point would be ground. This resistor would do nothing. So E would then become negative 10. If E is negative 10, that means that there's going to be, uh, what, half an amp? Tw negative 10 divided by 20, that's 0.5 amps flowing down this branch. I still have my two amps flowing down this branch, and so through the power, through this voltage source, I'm going to get two and a half amps. Well, that's exactly what we decided, two and a half amps. So that works. So the short circuit current is two and a half amps, as predicted by the Thevenin equivalent. So what that means is I could replace this whole circuit with a Thevenin equivalent. I could have a battery and a resistor. Uh, the resistance would be 10 ohms. The voltage would be 25 volts. I could also do a Norton equivalent. A Norton equivalent would have the short circuit current here and then the Thevenin resistance. So this would be again my 10 ohms, but this would then be 25, uh, 2.5 amps. There you go, 2.5 amps. That's the same circuit. I mean, basically, it's the same equivalent. Let's see if that makes sense. If I short it out, I get 2.5 amps. If I open it up, what do I get? I get 2.5 amps times 10 ohms at 25 volts. So yeah, that works. And that's all there is to it. See you guys next time.